What's going on guys, Mr. J here with not your typical vlog for today or speed drawing vlog. Today I'm going to be talking about my surgery and it's going to be pretty long of a video because I'm going to go into some pretty long detail. I have some notes that I want to touch on it and just fair warning, Madness is right here if you just saw him pop up as he's gonna distract me as much as he can and I'm gonna have other distractions as in I have my device turned on right now so in about 20 minutes you might hear me stutter with my speech a little bit because I have it turned up so I'm gonna show you things that you might not expect with this surgery so with it being turned on I'll explain it when it happens so if it does happen what I want to show you you'll understand when it does but I have certain things to show you with it um let me get my notes ready and I'm expecting a phone call so well actually I'm expecting two phone calls so those might happen but again madness is going for the phone like you love doing okay so okay um where to start this is just improvising the best i can on this topic um i'm gonna have video or pictures popping up on the screen to tell you what's going on and to give you some context of this um the type of surgery i had is um it's called Inspire. It's for obstructive sleep apnea. And it's called Inspire. It's a surgery, from what I was told, um, when it came out was technically 2014. It didn't get approved from the FDA until 2019. And it went into production, if you will, and started being performed on people into, until 2019 into early 2020 and started getting regulated more and more until 2021 and here we are early 2022 so I'm one of the I guess you can say one of the first people to really get this surgery and you know, honestly, they said that in the beginning, you're not going to see immediate results. Because with this surgery, your body is so used to having many years, if not a lifetime, of bad sleep. Okay? So, you have to take that in account that you went so long with bad sleep, right? So you're now correcting all those years of a lifetime, possibly, a bad sleep. And now you're applying good to great to excellent sleep. You're correcting that. So it's going to build up time that you need to fix that time period. So it's going to, like I said, take time. And bear with me, guys. I tend to repeat myself. I apologize for that. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves with people is when they repeat themselves. And I'm guilty of something that people do. And if you watch my live stream, I do that a lot. And I don't mean to. So if that bothers you. I apologize ahead of time. But a little bit with my backstory, I've always have had sleep issues always my entire life always have you know since i was a baby my mother always said i would just never sleep and as a child i remember never being able to sleep as a young child i remember never being able to sleep um as a teenager i remember never feeling like ready to sleep never wanting to go to sleep always being wired not being ADD but being so high hyper you know not like I said not ADD like just being like I was caffeinated all the time you know 
and then being a teenager, being tired all the time and wanting to sleep all the time. Not your typical teenager wanting to sleep all the time, even though I did have my typical teenager moments of wanting to sleep all the time, but that's because I was tired. You know, I remember I slept all the time in school, you know, and I thought that was me being a teenager, being wanting to sleep all the time. I slept a lot of time in school. I did. I'm guilty of it. I know I did. You know, my teachers could testify to it. And also, growing up, I was always skinny. You know, I have some pictures of me, you know, as an adult uh, that I'll try to pop somewhere here in the screen of me being skinny. And I'm going to point like this right now to show some pictures as me as a young adult of me being skinny. And when I say skinny, I mean, like, I was a twig. Yeah, like, literally, like, I was a skinny guy. And, you know, I could, just, no matter what I did, I could not put on weight whatsoever. I mean, I would eat and eat and eat. And I'm from New Jersey, okay? I now reside in Texas. And no matter what I ate in New Jersey, I remember eating full-on large pizzas and just would not put on weight. And no matter what I did, just would not put on weight. And then after moving to Texas, you know, even my first few years here, I would just not put on weight. And with Texas, they eat big. I mean, you know, doing my homework and my research for this video, you know, I would be looking at photos to find for this video. And, you know, I, you know, talking about my weight, you know, I would wonder why, um, the, why I got as big as I did and finally put on weight. And I'm like, that's how I got to the weight I did because I looked at all the food I was eating and I'm like, that's how I got as big as I did because what I was eating, you know, you don't think that you put on weight because... You know, it's, as you get older, you put on weight, which is true. But when you really look back and see what you were eating, because I, you know, I always take pictures of what I'm eating because I enjoy my cooking. I'm a good cook. You know, I think I'm an excellent cook. And I like to take pictures of my food. I'm guilty of it, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I look at the food and I'm like, damn, that's why I'm overweight. You know, I'm six foot two, 245 pounds now, you know, whereas back then, back in Jersey, I was 150 pounds, you know, and it's like, wow. I'm sorry, my dentures keep dropping. It's not the thing I told you about. My dentures just keep on dropping. I need to get another hard reline. But, um, yeah, so I slowly but surely started putting on weight. And then, you know, um, so, it, you know, fast forward about 10 years, you know, I start putting on the weight, and I'm going back to my notes. Um, oh, before I get into that, um, I was a smoker at a young age, I was a drinker at a young age, and I recently, you know, quit smoking, like, less than a year ago, I quit smoking, um, my drinking is cut back tremendously, um, but, you know, I've, like I said, drinker, smoker, and, you know, quit smoking, still drink, but not as bad as I used to, nothing like I used to, and, you know, did that, and I'm telling you all this so you can get context of what's going on with my sleep and how my sleep apnea started. So don't think I'm telling you all this because it doesn't play into my sleep apnea, because it does. Okay? It really does. So, um, so fast forward, you know, I start putting on weight, still being a smoker, still being a drinker, still having my sleep issues, 
you know, and, you know, I start getting to more serious relationships while, while I'm here in Texas, and I start getting told by my girlfriends at the time that, you know, I'm snoring uncontrollably, you know, it's annoying, they have to go to the other room, I sound like a chainsaw when I'm snoring, I sound like a loud-ass lawnmower, and, you know, I'm just thinking it's annoying. It's pestering them, it's bothering them. And I'm like, okay, you know, it is what it is, it's just something that happens, people snore, no big deal, right? So, I'm thinking nothing of it. You know, I've always had sleep issues. I'm finally sleeping, whatever. You know, no big deal. And then, slowly but surely, I get told I'm um, stop breathing in my sleep. You know, and I'm like, okay, whatever. No big deal. You know, and then that becomes more frequent where I get told I'm um, stop breathing a lot in my sleep. Again, don't care, whatever. You know, don't think anything of it. And then, you know, still having sleep issues, even though this is going on. And I'm telling the doctor I can't sleep at night, and they're giving me every sleep med under the book. And, you know, I'm still feeling extremely tired, even though, um, you know, apparently I'm sleeping and I'm having all these different issues that I don't know what's going on where I'm so tired and I'm like, Doc, I, I'm i not sleeping, you know, I just, I'm so tired, please. And it's like, I'm getting all these, I, I don't know how to word it, you know, it's just like, I'm getting told I'm stop breathing in my sleep. I'm getting told I'm snoring. I'm not... I'm feeling tired all of the time. Doctors are giving me all these sleep meds. And, I, I, you know, I just don't know. I can't do the math. I don't know what's going on. You know? So then... One doctor says, let's do a sleep study so we can try to understand this better. And I'm like, a sleep study? What the hell is a sleep study? And they explain it to me, and I'm like, okay, let's do it. So we do it, and they're like, you have sleep apnea. And I'm like, what the hell is sleep apnea? You know, I've heard of sleep apnea, but I'm like, is that like acne? Didn't know, didn't know. Yeah, you know, and they're like, let's try a CPAP. I'm like, what the hell is a CPAP? You know, and they explained it to me, and I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And, you know, here's a picture of me wearing it, and, you know, tried it out. And, frankly, I hated it. Why did I hate it? Because my face was being touched. I hate my face being touched. And yeah, you're seeing me touch my face. And trust me, I hate touching my face. I do. As much as I touch it, I hate it. I hate anything touching my face. Okay? I hate it when my girlfriends touch my face. Okay? So wearing a mask at night, blowing air into my face, I hate it. I can't stand it. It drives me insane. Okay? So that mask all the time... And expect me to get used to that? No way. It just did not cut it at all for me. Okay? I tried and tried and tried, and it did not work. Okay? The fact of, like, how it tried to do this and try to tune it to that and change out this and clean that and just the hose getting tangled up and... This going this way and this going that way. It's it was an, it it was horrible. I hated it. Okay, so got rid of that machine. Went back to more pills, more medication, more nonsense, and.
just more stuff that I didn't need. Okay, I was taking over-the-counter medications for sleep, more behind-the-counter medications for sleep, and just polluting my body with everything for sleep. Okay, just non-stop misery. Okay, just trying to sleep all the time for my whole life. Just trying to sleep. Okay. And. You know. My diet was poor. My health was poor. My mental health. My physical health was poor. I mean. Anything I was doing. Was poor. And. It. Everything was suffering. My life was suffering. My mental life was suffering. My physical life was suffering. My relationship life was suffering. Everything was suffering. So, you know, I start seeing a new pulmonologist, which is a sleep doctor. And do I honestly like the guy right now? No, I don't. Because he's like, he was recommended by my last primary doctor, and I didn't like him at all. I got rid of him. I finally pulled the trigger, and I got rid of him, okay? And I still have the same pulmonologist. Don't like the guy. Honestly, don't like the guy. He put me on two different sleep meds. I'm still on one of the sleep meds that he put me on. But the reason I don't like him, he's very, very, very quick when you see him. You see him once a once every three months to six months and you're only in his office for three minutes three to five minutes five minutes is a good day okay and when i saw him the second to last time he recommended me getting a dental appliance to put in my mouth for sleep okay well i can't do that because one it's not covered under my insurance Two, I can't do it because I wear dentures. So, that doesn't work for me. So, that leaves me to still find a way to sleep at night. So, he suggested this, this surgery for the Inspire, which I never heard of, but... What do you do when you have no options? You take your last option, right? So that's what I did. I started doing my homework about this surgery. And I'm like, if it's my last resort, might as well take it, right? So that's what I did. And, you know, I started doing my homework about it. And went online, went on their website. And, you know... Called up their 800 number, and I'm going to put all these pictures up for you guys. So if you're interested in it, you can do, do your own homework, call them up. And, you know, I'm not sponsored by them at all to put this up there. I'm not. You know, I'm doing it because I believe in it. And, enough, I mean, I wouldn't put it up there and bring this up. If I didn't, I mean, I had this device in me, okay? This is in me for the rest of my life, okay? I'm not putting this up there because they're paying me to do this. I mean, I did my own homework looking up on YouTube myself because there's a bunch of paid people that had their stuff up here on YouTube and there was one person other than me putting their video up here talking about this surgery, Okay, maybe there's more, I don't know, but I only found one other person. So, it's like, I'm putting my video up there so I can help educate people about this surgery. So, and I, I hope to reach more people by putting this video up there. It's going to take forever to put this up on YouTube, but I'm doing it. We're already 20 minutes in. So, um, but... Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a slow, slow process of putting, correcting my sleep. 
And, you know, one of the things that, which I'm surprised it hasn't kicked on yet. Yeah, I don't know if I did something wrong or I did something right, but it comes with this little remote. Yeah, I have to call the people about this. Um, yeah, I wanted to show you guys something with it, but I'm not going to be able to. Um, like I said, I'm still learning it with it. It comes with a remote. You turn it on, but like I sh and turn it off, just like I showed you there. But you turn it on, and it has two leads to it. One goes to your right on top of your lung, and one goes up from the lead to right behind your tongue and I'll show you pictures of the scar and how it healed and what it looked like after the surgery and then how it healed up and um, goes behind your tongue and then when you're breathing at night you know when you stop breathing and closes your airway it vibrates and makes your vibrates your tongue and opens up your airway so you can breathe at night and like I said, also, you know, it opens up that airway so you can breathe at night. And it's a slow process, like I said, 17 times already for keeping track. <laughs> um, but the next morning on the first night, I'll be honest, I actually felt the slightest bit of a difference. You know, the slightest bit of rest that next morning, I really did feel that slight bit of a difference. So, I'm really looking forward to the future of sleep with me. I really am. Because if I felt that slightest bit of a difference after the first night, I think that this could be a great future for me with sleep. And I went through hell for 41 years of no sleep. I look forward to, to another 41 years of great sleep. It's going to take a while to get there, but I'm going to get there. I've made it this far with no sleep. I think I'm going to make it that much further with great sleep. And that's my end game, is to sleep. And I'm going to try to pop in here maybe once a week to let you know how it goes. Because with that remote, you have the control anytime you want once a week to raise up the pressure of the vibration to, you know, because you got to build up a tolerance to find your sweet point to tune it into your body because like when you first get it activated which they activated the device that's in your chest after a month because you got to give your body time to heal and you know because they don't want to turn it on as soon as you get it because your body has to heal around it and you know for that so when you get it activated they take you in and they show you how it works and you know you feel that small vibration at first and you know you feel your tongue twitch and you get that feeling and you know they calibrate it right so you feel it and what's too much and what's too little and what will wake you up when you're asleep what won't wake you up and it it kind of makes sense, but it doesn't make sense when you hear it the first time. But 
once you feel it for yourself, it will make sense more. Because, you know, they set you at 10, but they want you to be uncomfortable at 5, but they want you to be comfortable at, like, 3. And, like I said, until you feel it yourself, you can't really make sense of it until you feel it yourself. So... But, like I said, they set you at 10 for the max, but they start you at 5 for the high, and then it's not like 10 is, is the end of the road, and then you're done. No. Once they peak you at 10, they can start you at the next level up at 20, per se, you know? Because there's 10 more after that, and then there's 10 more after that, and so on, and so on, and so on. They can keep increasing it as the lifetime because they can keep increasing, 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 increasing until you find that sweet point in your life that makes it comfortable for you. If that makes sense, you know, because there's no limitation on that, you know, kind of like I want to say it's like a CPAP where you know you find that oxygen level that's right. For for your breathing pattern, you know, because everybody's different. Everyone's breathing pattern is different. So, same thing with this machine. It, you got to find what's in tune with your body, you know. So, it's not just one setting and that's it, you know. It, there's endless amount of setting for everybody. Everybody is their own setting just like everybody is their own person. Everyone has their own fingerprint. You know, so... Don't think in one month or one day you're going to get the cure-all. It's not going to be like that. It's going to take time. And it, that's the beauty of it, you know? And, yeah, we all want immediate results. And I know I'm one of those people that wanted immediate results with this so i hope this helps some of you this is the beginning of my journey with this i if you want to see more like i said i'm going to try to put up a new video every week it won't be as long as this one because this is going to be my introduction and this is my beginning of inspire like i said i'm going to put a bunch of um, pictures up so their number will be there I'm going to put their link of their website at the bottom of this video it will be the very first link on the bottom of this video so if you want to check them out their the website's there all of their qualifications are there their number their phone number so all that will be there again I'm not sponsored by them it's just going to be straight up, 100% up to you guys if you're interested. So, take a look. If you're interested, take a look. You don't have to mention my name. I'm just Mr. J. So, they don't even know me by that name. They know my real name. So, you don't even have to say my name. Nothing about this channel. You know, it just it's up to you guys. It's just, I want to inform the public of this beneficial factors surgery that I know is going to help me and it may help somebody else so I hope you guys thank you for watching and if you do want to help me give this video a like it does help my channel grow it really does and it's going to help other people that want to know about this surgery so again thank you for watching stay Tune for my next drawing vlog, which I hope to put out with you guys soon. I just have a lot of setback going on right now. So, I'll see you guys next time. Until next time, just keep watching. <laughs> Love you guys. Peace.